Hello and welcome to the Titus Timeout podcast. I'm Nick Searle and in this second of a series of two podcasts, I will be discussing airflow calculation methods for displacement ventilation systems. In part one, I covered the ASHRAE calculation method, which I would recommend watching before jumping into this part two, where I will be describing the European REVA method. The two methods differ slightly in that the REVA process does not involve applying correction factors to individual heat gains, but is based on applying typical space temperature gradients to calculate acceptable supply and return temperatures. The difference between the supply and return temperatures is then used to calculate the required airflow to accomplish the space sensible cooling. The first step is to calculate the total space sensible heat load which will generally consist of occupants, equipment, lighting and envelope loads. To demonstrate the REVA calculation method, I will be using the same 900 square foot classroom used in part one, of which the total sensible heat gains are 23,401 BTUs per hour. In step two, we simply need to establish the total height of the room and the height of the occupied zone. Our classroom example is 10 feet high and has an occupied zone height of three and a half feet as the classroom occupants will be seated for most of the time. Step three involves identifying the control temperature for the space, TH, which is the temperature at head level at the top of the occupied zone which is typically 75F for most applications. In step four, we must determine the maximum allowable temperature gradient, delta THF max. This is the vertical temperature difference between foot and head level. Note that a high differential could result in discomfort. ASHRAE standard 55 2017 can be used for guidance, but for standing occupants, a 7.2F differential is recommended and for seated occupants, 5.4F. In step five, an appropriate supply air temperature, TS, is selected for the application for one of these four following scenarios. Stationary occupants at rest located within the supply outlet adjacent zone. TS should be equal to or greater than 65F. Stationary occupants at rest located outside the supply outlet adjacent zone. TS should be equal to or greater than 62F. Stationary occupants light work located outside the supply outlet adjacent zone. TS should be equal to or greater than 60F. And for transient occupants passing through the area, TS can be equal to or greater than 55F. A TS of 62F has been chosen for our classroom example. In step six, we will choose an appropriate REVA calculation model based on the room height. There are two models, one that refers to rooms with a normal ceiling height, which can be taken as around 14 feet. The second model refers to rooms with high ceilings, which should be applicable for entrance lobbies, airports and atria. We will be using the 50-50 rule as our classroom has a ceiling height below 14 feet. The Reva 50-50 rule can be explained by examining the temperature gradient in the space relative to the total space height. At the top, is the ceiling height at which the exhaust or return inlet is located. With a three and a half foot high occupied zone, the top of the occupied zone is 35% of the total height. At the base is the floor level where the supply air outlet is located. The occupied zone is shaded gray in this graphic. The 50-50 rule estimates that the space vertical temperature gradient makes up half of the total supply return temperature differential between the supply outlet and ankle level and the remaining half between the ankle level and ceiling. So now that we have established some starting parameters, I will go through the calculation process step by step. The first is a calculation to determine the temperature differential between the supply air from the diffuser to the room temperature at head height or space control temperature. Simply subtract 62 from the 75 head height temperature, resulting in a delta T of 13F. 
Now we will calculate the percentage of temperature gradient from the supply air to head height, which is the first step to allow us to calculate the exhaust or return air temperature. With the 50-50 rule, half of the temperature rise occurs from the supply air to the ankle level, while the remaining half occurs from the ankle level to ceiling level. As these two temperature gradients are approximately linear, they can be used to estimate the temperature rise at any height in the room. To calculate the percentage of temperature rise to the top of the occupied zone, which is 3.5 feet, we need to establish the fraction of the occupied zone relative to the overall room height by simply dividing the 3.5 foot occupied zone height by the 10 foot ceiling height, resulting in 0.35. To calculate the percentage of temperature gradient from ankle to head, we need to multiply 0.35 by 0.5 which is 0.175. This is then added to the 0.5 fraction of the temperature rise from the supply outlet to ankle. This results in a total factor of 0.675. Using the percentage of temperature gradient from the supply air outlet to head height, we can now calculate the exhaust or return air temperature differential, which is delta TSE by dividing delta TSR from calc 1 by 0.675. The result is 19.3F. The exhaust air temperature TE is calculated by simply adding the supply air temperature to the delta TSE calculated in the previous step. So 62 plus 19.3 results in 81.3F. Now the ankle level temperature can be calculated by adding half the overall supply exhaust delta T to the supply air differential of 62F, resulting in 71.7F. To check that the temperature differential between floor and head height is within comfortable limits, simply subtract the ankle height temperature from the head height temperature which is 3.3F. This is well below our target of 5.4F for seated occupants. The supply air volume to the space, CFM Sense, can now be calculated by dividing the total sensible heat gains by 1.08 multiplied by the supply exhaust delta T, which results in 1,123 CFM. Finally, we must check that the airflow required for the sensible cooling is equal to or greater than the airflow required for the ventilation. In part 1, we covered the ASHRAE standard 62 calculations for ventilation air, which resulted in 315 CFM for the classroom. The final total CFM required is the greater of the two. Just to summarise, during cooling, our classroom requires 1,123 CFM of primary air delivered at 62F, which will be exhausted at 81.3F. Let's compare these results with the ASHRAE method covered in part 1. Clearly, the REVA method is more conservative, particularly as the floor to head delta T is only 3.3F compared to the 5.4F in the ASHRAE calculations. So that about wraps up the demo of the Reva method. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our back catalogue of webinars for a more in-depth look at the fundamentals of displacement ventilation. Thanks for taking the time out with us.